Hello and welcome to the Unofficial Controller Podcast, your weekly gaming podcast, episode 86. The Unofficial Controller Podcast community's best games of 2020 with me, George, and as always joined by Bobby, community hero, my community zero. How's it going? Good, you? Fantastic. We'll give uh, fans new and old. Uh, one thing I've got to let you know, which we'll, I'll unveil to you in a second, it's interesting, uh, we'll give fans new and old a rundown of how the show's going to go. Coming up, we've got the news. We've got some, as always, Nintendo, Sony, and Xbox news for the assembled masses, Bobby. The feature, we've reached out to the community, and they've reached back, tickles and, or tickled us under our chins with their best games of 2020. After last week when you couldn't make it, me and Tom discussed our best games of 2020. We thought we'd open the forum in the style of a Roman pantheon and say, what was your best games, listeners? Then. Um, in a change to proceedings because Stingray's booked himself a holiday. There's no new releases. Stingray's the guy that we normally use as the medium to have a look through what's coming out new this week. There's been nothing, okay? So he's took a break. So we may, um, I think we owe it to the listeners to have a flick through hashtag Stingray's boot on Instagram. And then the show will end when I ask you what you're hoping to play. But the show cannot begin. Now, Odders... He's been looking at his bike because he's been doing nothing but eating selection boxes of chocolates and eating leftovers from Christmas. He's put on a little bit of midriff pound and he's thinking, how am I going to get rid of this? So grip tight on the handlebar of that brand new mountain bike that Father Christmas somehow managed to get down a chimney and reassemble in your front room. Odders, grip tight. As I asked Bobby, what you been playing, Bobby? Just Spider-Man and Miles Morales. I haven't really played in a week, so wow. I just literally played a few hours before the show. Oh, okay. Yeah, so far so good, dude. It looks great. I like, uh, well, I mean, obviously, graphic-wise, it's phenomenal. Control-wise, yeah. it's spot on. Uh, I like the the voice acting, and so far, the story is a little interesting. I haven't got that far yet, but. I'm I'm enjoying what I what I played. The the interactions with the family members are actually very well done. There's the, you can feel like a genuine warmth between the characters in the in the game. The the scene that you're referring to, we spoke a little bit off air, but it's the getting ready for Christmas scene, which is obviously mm-hmm. quite fitting. It's that that time of year. There's coldness in the air. It's kind of reflecting. If it wasn't for the Rona, exactly what would be going on outside of our front window here in New York. Yeah. Um, but you feel that warmth getting ready for Christmas, then putting a cook on in the kitchen, you're getting choosing a record from the record box and putting it on, and the way that all morphs together and the way they're laughing and interacting with each other is... Yeah, it, it was cool. It was like movie quality. It it really is. Mm-hmm. It really is. It's yeah. special. And, and, but more than movie quality, I'd say they actually have managed to capture a non-faked, although it's faked, obviously, but it feels more intimate in that than a movie it feels more yeah on one and personal which i thought was quite good that was one of the things i took away from it the actual voice acting and the the animation and the the motion capture was fantastic especially for that meal um but you'll yeah, see yeah. as it goes on that it gets it builds and it gets better um wonderful i'm glad you're enjoying that anything else yeah. you've been playing no that's it i, I finished uh Bahala last week no, the last game I finished was Guns, Gore, and Cannoli 2. It was on sale, and I had the first one. I never played it. I said, you know, let me just do this real quick before the end of the year. So I did that. It's like a it, – it's a running gun, really. Mm. And there's zombies, and there's the mafia involved. It's it's pretty funny. Not Nothing too serious. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was enjoyable. Yeah, it's like a hand-drawn animation. That's quite cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, well, pull up a, a pillow, Bobby, and a duvet, and also set your clock back to 2005. No, 2006, probably, because i tell you what, last, last episode I was telling Tom that I'd been playing Batman Arkham Origins mm-hmm. um, on the PlayStation 3. It's a Christmas-themed game, so I thought, mm-hmm. why not? And I'd already got the... I think me and you spoke 
maybe maybe a couple of months ago and i was like i can't i don't really grind with it i'm not really enjoying it and you were like really dude what's wrong with you and i was like, i don't know <laughs> and you know you try and play a christmas game in september and it doesn't quite work okay yeah but yeah i looked it launched around i think october november so it's probably when it first launched it was around the right time frame a little bit like mars morales um it's the right time frame for that game to get played obviously it's a little bit of a cash in from them because they had mm-hmm. the and then success of the previous arkham game um, they felt the need to probably rush out something like that. It's open world, so you're in Gotham itself, and I'll try and keep it very succinct, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. When I I started it on Christmas Eve night, and I did a couple of hours, and finally dialed my surround sound in because there was a couple of settings I hadn't selected properly, so it was all working. Then I forced Dolby Digital on the hard dashboard of the PlayStation 3, and finally it came through in every game exactly as I wanted it to. It's been a battle. And there's been a hell of a lot of Reddit threads looked through like, oh, what am I not doing right? What am I not doing? And finally, it's all sorted. DVDs, Blu-rays, the lot, it all works. That's awesome. Yeah, so I'm happy with that. And um, the uh, the game, fantastic. I didn't labor on it. I didn't do every challenge. I didn't do all the stuff. And I was very close to the end game when me and Tom had our little episode last week. Um, so that's all done. Wrapped up in a bow. Pretty bow done. Um, I threatened to order a solid state drive, which I've done for the PlayStation 3. Everyone's like, come here for cutting edge gaming. And yeah, I've got a PS5. No one else can get one. And I've just left mine on standby. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'll get to it when it's 10 years, 20 years old. Um, and I've I put on and played a game by Ninja Theory called Enslaved Human Odyssey. The, obviously, I spoke about this on the Discord. If you're listening now and you're wondering how to get more deeper involved with the community and the podcast, then we have a Discord channel as well as a social media on Instagram and Twitter, and that's probably where you're able to engage me and Bobby directly in conversation. He's Chronicles of a Gamer, uh, much to my disgust, and I'm UC George, <laughs> so he's the identifiers. But, you know, Bobby likes to operate as stealth. Uh, we So... I've played that. What a fantastic game. Really great story. It's a retelling of the Chinese fable of Monkey. Uh, You play as Monkey and this girl. It's set in a a post-apocalyptic future. One of the things that stuck out to me when I first saw this back in the day when it first launched was the colours. You know, Last of Us has like the the brick with the grass and the flowers growing through where there would have been a road and it's all very beautiful to look at. Enslaved uh, Odyssey to the West and did that uh, almost as eloquently. And one Uh why i got the ssd is there's quite a bit of texture pop uh because of the time it takes to get something off a hard drive through the processor and onto the screen whereas an ssd uh, especially i uh, i did a little bit of research on Eurogamer, which is where digital foundry um share their info that was one of the games that they tested to see if it fixed this and it did so i thought oh great i'll get it i'll treat myself it's on offer it's 50 quid 50 bucks call it what you like amazon my friend Jeff Bezos emailed it to me, no issues. And he's in. Um, so anyway, it's hard to, to put in. On the PlayStation 3, you literally just pop a cover off, you undo a screw, you move it to the right, and the whole thing pulls out. You literally slap the new hard drive in. So it needs to be a SATA 2.5 inch drive. Anything will work. But obviously, you can put in newer technology ones. Um, and it doesn't it's not night and day you're not unlocking the full power of an ssd because the playstation has got let's say it's a a two-way traffic lane the playstation 3 can receive from the hard drive but what the old school hard drives do is they're two-lane traffic but what an ssd is it's almost like a four-lane motorway going into a two-lane so it can just throw information at the mm. playstation 3 so it can suck it in quicker it's like oh okay yeah yeah give it to me give it to me give it to me now the playstation 5 and the xbox series x they're a four-lane motorway into a four-lane motorway you know it can suck in a, a massive amount of data and that's where the perks of the ssd style technology have come from from the new consoles but the playstation 3 was built with a mechanical drive in mind so it's only a two-lane highway but this is me using my americanisms here because i'm a uh, and I'm, I'm a, an Englishman in New York, you can take your four-lane motorway and, or highway and slap it into a two-lane highway. At least you're, giving, you're throwing the information at it. As much as it can take in, then it will take in. Um, so that's, that's good news. And if anyone's got an aged PS3, I'd recommend updating the hard drive to at least one with a 7200 RPM spin wheel on it because that way it's almost as quick. But SSDs now are so cheap. 
or affordable that if you were invested into an older console, even a PlayStation 4, and you probably can't afford a PS5 or not thinking of upgrading, you could throw an SSD in that bad boy for 50 bucks, mm. uh, Samsung 860 Evo, and the thing would be transformed. Again, the PlayStation 4 is probably an eight-lane height or a four-lane, uh, you know, a three-lane highway, for want of a better word, and the SSD is a four-lane highway, so it is a, an incremental increase. It does improve install times and load times and texture pop and all that other rammel. So it's worth doing. Back to the game. Now we've got the technical jargon out of the way. We've got Enslaved Human Odyssey. Now it is. Um, it's, it was a fantastic experience. It didn't overstay its welcome. Um, you meet some characters in there. I, I mentioned on the Discord that I met this character called Piggy. And I thought, this this voice is familiar to me. And it's an actor called Richard Ridings who actually plays uh, Daddy Pig in Peppa Pig, the infamous worldwide renowned cartoon for kids. Uh, and if that's not typecast, I don't know what is. It's like, <laughs> oh, this guy can play a pig really well. Put him in it. Uh, Andy Serkis, who plays Gollum and every other motion capture and movie you've ever seen from King Kong to, yeah. to uh, the captain in Tintin. He, he's in it. He does a fantastic job. He plays an American accent. I don't want to do too much. I don't want to spoil it because I think you need to play it through to the end, but he also plays another character, which I found re- it was a very meta, very strange moment. They could have picked anybody else. Uh, in my mind, they should have picked somebody else, but it is what it is. Um, the game was great. You kind of like, it loads areas basically, and your friend Trip is the girl who's sort of enslaved you she throws this sort of dragonfly up in the air and it does a flyby of the area so you can see the bad guys and you take them out with a fighting style. Um, it, it's, it's very fun and it's, it's quite, it's challenging but it's not overbearing to the point where you're like, I don't want this nonsense in my console anymore. You know, so it's it's enough of a challenge to be, I think just over the, uh, over the uh, holidays, I've just wanted to have something that's, one and done you know mars morales it was eight hours it was in and out it's longer than that if you want to platinum it um for definite but um batman arkham origins was sort of eight to ten hours quite lowbrow mm-hmm. fun entertaining enslaved odyssey to the west was somewhere between eight and ten maybe a bit less one and done sorted and then quite like me as bizarre as as you'd imagine i decided i was going to play <laughs> oh, oh and by the way enslaved odyssey to the west is backwards compatible uh and if it's a ninja theory game and if you want to sort of a, get a, a taste xbox owners of what ninja theory obviously you've got the sensors blade hellblade sacrifice or whatever it's called hellblade sensor was sacrifice fantastic game if you want to see what else is in their portfolio i encourage you to get hold of a copy it'll be one pound or one dollar for a copy of Hellblade, um, Origins, Odyssey, Odyssey, oh, forget it. You know what? It, rewind. <laughs> I said the name properly the first time. <laughs> get that ordered off eBay or your GameStop or whatever and get it played. If you can digitally download it, save your feet, maybe pay a little bit more, I encourage mm. you to. Um, the other game I played and I've nearly finished and I never played back in the day and I don't know why was. Um, force unleashed star wars the force oh unleashed. yeah my brother played that i played a little bit with him it was pretty cool did you know the guy you play as mm-hmm. facial capture voice mm-hmm. capture is the guy from days gone deacon yeah the same kid right <laughs> yeah. yeah and every time he says certain things i'm like oh it's deacon it's my man uh and oh i didn't know that that was the same guy once you see it you can't not see it so uh, you're either playing uh, as soon as i realized i was like oh my goodness gracious me and do you know what the ps3 uh or the xbox 360 or even the ps2 because this game launched great. We talk of, well i haven't seen the ps i've got it on psp and i'll be honest with you it looks terrible Oh, really? I started playing it about six months to a year ago on PSP and was like, oh my goodness gracious me, it looks like a dog's breakfast. I can hardly even pick it out. You know, I, I can only tell it's a stormtrooper because the guy's all white. You know, if I, if it wasn't for that, I'd have no idea. Um, yeah, it's a bit rough around the edges. But for the era, it's, it's much like I would say Valhalla. I think it launched around the time where the old consoles were around, but the new consoles were coming out. So... Um, there's one level on there, the Scrap Planet, 
which looks fantastic. It's very of the time, you know, when the 360 and the PS3 came out, everything was brown. Uh, and then Saved Odyssey to the West was one of those rare games that wasn't brown. Um, it was green, whereas this was very brown. <laughs> but the story kind of interesting. The controls are pretty good. James the Work Experience Boys had a quick go on it, and he's enjoyed it. So, yeah, other than that, a little bit of Super Smash. But, uh, yeah, that would be about... Again, my my I, I I get the feeling my what you've been playing they're they're a little bit overindulgent and but you know you want a, a critique of what I've been actually playing game wise you've got it but I would say unless you've got any questions on my rather strange taste in video games Bobby it's time for the news we've scoured the very darkest regions of the internet to bring you the latest stories first up wheeling out the big guns uh, do you want this Bobby or is it do you want to go yeah. first go on then. Xbox boss uh, Phil Spencer appeared on Major Nelson's latest podcast early this week. You can watch the full 40-minute interview on the Xbox website, uh, where he closed out the interview by taking a bit, uh, by talking a bit of his plans for the long-term future of Xbox, both in terms of the next couple of years as well as his, as well as three ten years from now. Uh, dis- uh, discussing the success, the success of <laughs> Xbox Game Pass and Xbox Game Cl- uh, Cloud Gaming. Project xCloud, Spencer State, uh, noted that these services originated around five years ago and that the team is still thinking uh, that far ahead with new ideas. Uh, he says, what are the things that are coming in the next year? I like to think about that as Horizon Zero. And when I think of Horizon 1 being two to three years out, and we, we kind of know what these things are and what's on the roadmap. And then you have those ideas that are like three to ten years out and most of those won't work. Those are the kinds of investments that you're putting in. Backwards compatibility was one of those things of, hey, let's try something that probably won't work, but want to give it a try. And uh, there are some things that I'm incredibly excited about that hopefully over the next year or two we'll, we'll, we'll get to talk about. Spencer pointed out that his team is focused primarily on plans for the present day and the next couple of years. But part of the job also involves experimenting with those long-term ideas that could be real changers. He says, our job running Xbox is to be in the moment and thinking about the roadmap ahead, but also experimenting with some things that have the potential to be real game changers, but also are risk-filled and technology-filled. Some cool things on the horizon uh, are next. It's an incredibly exciting time for, for the teams right now. Mm, that's... Uh... I'll tell you one thing about Phil Spencer. He's not shy about discussing out loud things that are going on behind the scenes. He's not giving anything away, but he's certainly very good at whetting the appetite. Like, what are they working on? You know, what is it where that they, they were doing now that he literally says in his own words, won't work? But they're the kind of investments you've got to put in. That's um, intriguing. Uh, it's... Uh, they're certainly trying really, really hard at the minute to sort of close that gap numbers-wise and, and goodwill-wise. And so far, they seem to be hitting all the right notes. They just need the traction now in the gaming space. I think 2021 will be the year where we see more from their studios. They've had some very meaty acquisitions going back over the last two or three years, yeah, including obviously the most recent one, which is still not done. I was doing some digging the other day. The Bethesda deal is done on paper, but the lawyers are still bashing out the finer details, which may run. um, There's also some rumors on the street that Starfield's a lot closer to being done than many people realize. Obviously, um, I believe PlayStation were trying to grab exclusivity on that, um, Starfield, um, for a timed exclusive that they'd paid for, which kind of indicates that it's a little closer than we have been led to believe. You know, but Cedar are like, they don't, you don't think the game's coming out and then they do a press conference out of nowhere and say the game's live in three weeks' time or something daft. You know, that's the kind of game they pull. So I wouldn't be surprised that we don't see... Uh, maybe March, we might hear something about Starfield. Um, if the... If the ink's not dry on the contract, one would imagine they've got to push forward with multiple platform release on that one. So you heard it here first. Yeah. You might see that launching day and date on PlayStation systems and Xbox. So that's an encouragement, if anything, that Microsoft's lawyers probably need to hurry that along Um, because you would imagine 
that game, new IP, would be an interesting one for them to try and lock down and maximise that Bethesda relationship ASAP. They certainly need to remunerate that um, deal pretty quickly because it, mm. uh, it's pretty costly. Uh, but other than that, I think 2021 is going to be the year of the Xbox, personally. I think they've got lots of things lined up. They've got all their exclusive studios, some of which we've seen with Grounded, Obsidian's game based in someone's back garden where you're the little characters, basically Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I'm not surprised that Disney haven't come along with the big fat suing pencil by now. But uh, they're getting away with it, and fair play to them. I said, said to Tom last week, they've had the update for the Koi Pond, so there's now a pond in the game. You can build underwater bases and... Yeah, fascinating looking game. It's all on Games Pass as well, and it's all in its sort of beta stage as well. So it's all there to test out in in all its glory, guts and all. So um, <clears throat> yeah, excited by that. Can't wait for that to finally get its full release, so we can see what the full crack is with that. Whether it's a story game or whether it's a persistent online game, I think we're yet we're yet to find out. But tongue in cheek humour that I find quite appealing. Before I dive into the next bit of news, Bobby, have you seen the PlayStation Plus lineup for 2021 yet? January? Yeah, I saw it. Okay, you happy with that? No? Yes? I mean, I have the Tomb Raider. I don't really care about Maneater. And Greedfall looked looked interesting. No, not Greedfall. Yeah, it's yeah, Greedfall, right? Yeah, it is, it is Greedfall. Yeah, it looked interesting, but I don't know. I, my friend had it. He says he enjoyed it, but he hasn't played it. Uh, I, hours, I, like, I totally missed the boat on Greedfall. I thought it was an online persistent MMO RPG. I honestly thought it was, but I, I don't know where I got that idea from because when I, that's what I thought it, too, I reread the review, and it's not that at all. It's just no. an RPG. I was like, yeah, wow. it's it's. Uh, I wouldn't say Dark Souls like, but it, something like of that nature. Yeah, but uh, obviously based in an open world, mm-hmm. so I yeah. might check that out. Anyway, next bit of news. Um, stole a little bit of its thunder there, Bobby, but you know what? Probably eases its landing on the shores. Man-eating Sony spits out cash. Sony has announced the PlayStation Plus lineup for tw- January 2021. In addition to PlayStation 4 games Greedfall and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, PlayStation 5 owners can look forward to Man-Eater, a nautical open-world action title about being a bloody shark. Uh, that's good news on its own, but those who recently bought the Ferocious Fish Simulator might feel a little shortchanged. As it so happens, it appears Sony's refunding those who purchased Man- Maneater on PS5 in light of its PS Plus status. Now, this is a first. Over on Reddit, user Bray Wyatt um, shared a message they received on the console which states they'll be getting their money back as PS Store credit and can keep the game in their PS5 library. Bray White notes that they're from the US and that money hasn't been returned just yet, but refunds do normally take a few days to process. We have received word from another person who's had the same experience, so it all sounds pretty legit to us. The only question now is, what's the cutoff point? Sony probably isn't going to refund every single copy of money a purchase for PS5. Maybe those who bought it within the last month will be contacted, for example. In any case, it's a reasonably nice gesture. A common complaint about PS Plus games is that those who've recently forked out for the game find out only days later that it's come for free. Uh, It's happened to me a couple of times, but it it is what it is. I always just put that down to experience, but maybe there's a a change in the air there. Obviously, if you're a PlayStation 5 owner, let's face it, there's PlayStation 5 digitals out there in the ecosystem now. So the only place you can buy these games is through their portal. Now, Maneater is a game that came out on the PlayStation 4. I've heard lots of good things about it, and I've heard that it's got an awful lot of goodwill. Now, I would say to you, Bobby, that ought to be probably one of the next games in your rotation because it's very much a piece of you. It's very much a Ubisoft. Now, when I say Ubisoft open world, what I mean is you go to one point, you climb a tower or the equivalent in Man Eater. It shows you all the collectible trash and tat that they want you to go around collecting in that area. You do all that. You level up your shark. You become a little bit bigger because you've eaten more stuff. You move to the next area because you're powerful enough to swim in that area of the sea now. You unlock the cove. Boom. It highlights all the things. It's very much what I would call a Bobby game. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. And I've I've heard it's also got the same sort of um, goodwill as games like Mad Max. People are liking it to... I'm not saying that you're driving around revenging your your murdered wife and kid by the the, the night rider. 
I'm not suggesting that, but uh, it, it's very much in the same vein as that game that came out um, probably in 2016 now, so quite some time ago. Yeah, really? That but it's, it's Yeah, it's got that vibe to it. So I'd recommend that uh, you add it to library, as you probably will do anyway. Yeah, I add to library. And sure. um, yeah, that to me says screams... I'm Bobby's new favourite game that he never knew he even was ready for. So, yeah, get ready for that. It's... You know what's funny? What's that, my friend? You mentioned, you mentioned, you mentioned Mad Max. Mm. Does a Mad Max take place in 2021? It does, yeah. Mad Max 1 as well. So it's, mm-hmm. when you watch Mad Max 1, um, the movie, <laughs> it's not as though society's gone completely not, crazy not at yet. that point. No, it's, it's, it's on the edge, isn't it? Which uh, Australia 2021, can I see it? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. We just need a guy called Max to go and get a V8 interceptor uh, and, you, and you, you're all go, friend. So just be aware. Maybe get Manny to finish before the oil runs out. <laughs> What's next in the news bag? We got Dust Off the Boots, Captain Falcon. Uh, last November, Nintendo's F-Zero series turned 30. I can't believe that. While there are no signs of it making a comeback anytime soon, if it was to happen, one guy would be happy to help out is Sega's Tishiniro Nogisai Nogishi. You just play liberties with it. I mean, I don't think it's going to Sounds ring good. Nah. Exactly. Nagishi is known for producing the Yakuza series nowadays, but back in 2003, he worked on arguably the best entry in the F Zero series, F Zero GX for the Nintendo GameCube by Sega's Amusement Vision. Speaking to Red Bull France last year, Nagishi said he would be open to working on the series again if given, out, if given the opportunity. As unlikely as it may be, if it was to happen, it would have to be a, a real challenging game as Mario Kart is already the fun and accessible racer in Nintendo's library. Hmm. Putting aside these odds of it happening, I must admit uh, I have a lot of affection for F-Zero GX. If the opportunity were to present itself, I wouldn't mind. And in that case... I like to make it a challenging game. I believe that if Nintendo wants a racing game that is fun and accessible, they already have Mario Kart for that purpose. So this is another one of those dream moments. I think um, a guy from the Yakuza franchise recently in our news section as well repeat, reported that he wanted to have a crack at doing a Sonic game, um, mm-hmm. do something different with the Sonic franchise. And now we've got all those worked on the F-Zero franchise before. Um Toshiro's thinking about dusting dusting it off and having another crack. And I say fair enough because the Switch could do with an F-Zero game. Yeah. Really could. And it, correct me if I'm wrong, I know the Wii U got like a bit of a Mickey Mouse, what in people's eyes, Star Fox game where you had to use the uh, gamepad to fly the thing. The Switch could do with a, a Star Fox game as well. Yeah, I'll, 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 yeah I agree. And, and there's so fun- many things they could do there's so many and they've but got they so many characters as yeah. well you've only got to play super smash before you think to yourself they've got so many franchises like where's kid icarus mm-hmm. where has he gone he had a 3ds game i think every episode now i'm putting out an all points bulletin for kid icarus but where is he no where- man this is how this is how americanized i get i'm putting out an apb for this guy it's- uh we, I've forgotten that I should have told you to pull out a uh, a listener comment of the month to award the prize. I've forgotten. Oh, and I no. also haven't browsed the Discord enough to come up with a, a person that's willing, that's that really deserves Discord. So we'll, we'll delay that. Adam, put it on ice. It's mm-hmm. going to happen. But we just forgot. I've just remembered. So we'll come back to that because every week... Every month we give out now in 2021, we give out a prize for Discord member of the month. That's the person who gets most involved and upholds the unofficial controller podcast values on there, which, as you know, it's a PG podcast, no swearing, but everything yep. else is, is fair game. Um, but it's a, it's a thoroughly decent egg on there. There's a few names that spring to mind, but I want to I wanna rouse the Discord. Obviously, you win um, the Discord uh, member of the month wins something off of Redbubble. Um, which I choose. And the person who wins best comment of the month is someone who gets to pick something from um, Adam the Artist's shop, one of his fine, fine prints that he's drawn, hand-drawn, wonderful stuff. 
they win that for the comment on the social media for the post. We always ask for every month, we say, oh, we're looking at this game or we're thinking about talking about this in gaming or this scenario or this console or what was your favourite memory of this? And they put it on the social media with the post and then every month we pick the best one. They win a prize. We've just forgotten. It's Christmas. I've ate a lot. I've had more sweets and possibly or candies as, as one man really should. Um, and that's not, you know, how many of those Hershey hugs can one man eat in one go? I don't know, but I'm, I'm, I'm damn close to the <laughs> King Hershey hug. Yeah. I, I had a nightmare the other day that I woke up wrapped in foil and you and Eva were peeling back the foil and nibbling on me and promising <laughs> that you weren't going to eat all of me, but you were hungry and you didn't want to go to the shops because there's a queue. So maybe you could eat like a quarter of me and that'd be acceptable. And, and I was like, well, I don't know, because if I turn back to a human, that might be my leg or my arm or something. Yeah. Really it's bizarre. And, 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 but, you, you know, you're very, you're very gracious to me here. We're living in Tom's apartment rent-free, but you do, you're almost like my chaperone, so I don't walk the wrong way down the wrong street in New York and come back with a couple of knives sticking out of <laughs> my belly. So you're keeping me alive. And, and for that, I'm grateful. So maybe I should let you eat half of my chocolate arm. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> there you go. It was a fever dream. Let's hope it's Sugar not for real. sure. Sugar filled. Sugar filled for sure. Sugar filled fever dream. Yeah. Bobby, if we did miss something, if people are bored of my candy filled rants, how would they get in contact with us and let us know that we are both Twinkies six months past a sell by date? They can contact us at the Instagram or Twitter at the Unofficial Controller Podcast. They can send us an email which is George prefers ways of communicating at questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com or they can join the discord, which is in the, uh, the bio in the link tree on any social media, Instagram mm-hmm. or Twitter. You just go on there, you press the button, takes you to the link tree and it will escort you almost on a magic carpet ride to any destination of your choosing. It doesn't really get any better than that. I see one thing I will need to add to the link tree is the red bubble. But if you go on there and search unofficial control, no, you search comic pictures. Uh That's Adam. He looks after all the merch for us. He's probably retiring at some point in time next week based on the the flood, the overwhelming flood of response. Um, But we want you guys to be able to walk around in merch, further the show. Um, And that's all good for us. So we like the support and we think you deserve it as well because we know some of you are very, very loyal very supporting very into the show and if you want to drink out of an unofficial controller drinks cup <laughs> i'm not gonna stand in your way i need to enable that you know it needs to happen doesn't it if you want to put that drinks cup down on unofficial controller podcast coaster while looking at your unofficial controller podcast print art on the wall while also thumbing an unofficial controller pen in your lips while then writing notes in your unofficial controller <laughs> podcast notebook I, I want that to be able to happen one man who's gone all in on unofficial controller podcast merch recently, Mr. Graham C, a.k.a. Well, Stephen, a.k.a. Road to Thinner Me, is the nicest man on the internet. But someone who qualifies as a very, very close second, if not equal first, Mr. Graham C. I hope you've had a wonderful Christmas. And those speakers look fire, friend. He's got some new speakers for his PC. Yes, I saw that. Yeah, they're really cool. Uh, he's gone all in on the unofficial controller merch. Oh, that too. He sits on the unofficial controller piles <laughs> pillow. Okay. He's not I got know. piles, but he's bought it anyway. He's got the unofficial controller uh, podcast travel um, pillow. You know, those mm-hmm. things that go around your neck. He's got an unofficial controller pen. He's got an official controller toilet paper, probably. Um, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. You know, do you want people wiping their defecation on, I don't know, whatever. But Adam, through the Red Bubble, has enabled it. So it's or everything is possible. That logo can go literally on anything. Yeah, can. Unofficial controller podcast com, Dom. I went there. Do you know what? Someone's got to explain to Game Boy Matty what a condom is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, eventually he's going to have to know. Oh, he's listening now. He's like, Mom, Dad. Yes. What's that? What's that? Oh well, that's the probably the reason why there's no Game Boy Steven right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> moving swiftly on. It's time for the feature. Oh, the, the, what the <laughs> what we call 
I probably just lost four thousand listeners. <laughs> I think we can we can probably afford it at this point. I'll probably get a phone call from El Buccio, be furious, but you know, it is what it is. Um, last week, uh, you were unable to, due to family reasons, which were remain unnamed. You couldn't join us last week for the unofficial controller hosts discussion about best game of the year. It was like a in between Christmas and New Year special. This is episode one of twenty twenty one, but. We decided to reach out to the community and say to them, "What was you, you've heard enough from our uh, Ramel, um, supposed um, knowledge gurus that you are hosting a podcast as you do. We want to know now what the listeners thought was the best game. Do they agree with us? Have they come up with something completely left field? But before we do, you were absent last week, which is... You know, totally fine. The show survived. Yeah. We managed to get Tom some parole, which kept Thanks, him Tom. Uh, out of Rikers Island for Thanks a week. Thanks to Rikers Island for letting him come back. I appreciate you it. You should have heard the conversation, me and El Buccio, because obviously this show, um, I sold this show to the Mexican streaming cartel, which is Zutamax Media. You can yeah. find them on all social media. It's also the home of uh, Birds of a Feather, a rather mediocre sitcom um here in the uk and el dorado which was a failed british soap and a host of other trash that no one really wants to watch that's big in mexico um they needed someone to prop up the game inside of it me and el buccio had a couple of bit of a powwow it's probably somewhere for him to dispose of his um illegally sought gains through some sort of legal means i hate to think that i'm being used as a money laundering service but you know what it pays pretty well yeah uh, I had to negotiate with him some extra monies to pay Tom's parole for that extra day or three. And Tom then decided he wanted a wage for that episode. Uh, he wasn't going to do it free gratis. So, um, yes. So for two weeks, El Buccio had to pay three wages, uh, which was extreme. But yeah. I made sure you got your cut, friend, even though you couldn't be here. So um, before we dive you, in to what the community says... What was your game of 2020, seeing as you weren't able to tell us last week? It uh, goes with the Shima. Sure, no, oh, sure. right. Okay. Because I think yeah. me and Tom went, came down on the side of... I had more... Um, I didn't look at it from a game point of view. I looked at it from... You haven't played it yet. It's on your pile. So um, we went with Last of Us Part 2. Mm-hmm. So two to one. Um, that means the official unofficial controller podcast game of the year was last of us part two which kind of fits in quite nicely with what the actual bigger boy jeff Keeley decided was game of the year which was also last of us part two um so maybe next week maybe next year i'll make sure i put my hand over my uh, exam paper because obviously jeff keely has been copying it's again cheap hopping yep yeah, yeah. <laughs> And knowing the teacher, knowing Jeff Keeley is a proper uh, brown nose, so I would be the one held over in detention for copying Jeff's homework <laughs> when actually what happened was he copied ours. Even though we were two weeks after the Game Awards, I don't care about the detail. And you picked uh, Ghost of Toshima. Um, yeah, any reason one. why? I just liked his, I just liked Jin Saki's character. I yeah. like the, the eternal fight he had with him being honorable and him being dishonorable. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Mongolian... Vikings coming in to conquer Japan. The whole story there, the scenery. Uh, there's a lot, lots of touching moments, but lots of NPC characters there as well, not just regular side missions, but all these side missions I felt like had a purpose to get back control of their island. Yes. Whether then, instead of just getting, oh, I, this guy needs an apple. You know, it was like, no, I need you to help me get my archers ready because if we're going to join you, we have to make sure we could take them out. That was something that me and Tom got into the conversation of last week. It was like how open world games, because open world games currently, yes, they've got a next gen skin on them. They have. Mm-hmm. But when we went from 2D to 3D, platform games got a little bit lost. But by the time the PS2 era came around, they were collect em ups, okay? Yeah. And then when the PS3 came around, these games morphed into sort of open world games. It's basically the, the progression of games along the way of the way they've gone. And there's this disjointed feeling when you play an open world game of like main story mission feels very slick, feels very good. Side mission is I've lost my cat. It's very badly, badly voice acted. You've got to, you've got to go two villages down to kill a guy for no apparent reason, because in video games you have to kill someone to progress a story. You then, he drops this strange 
spawn, which is like some yarn, which you then bring back and <laughs> waggle under the tree to tempt the cat down. Oh, and she she then she yeah. then thanks you and gives you a plus two upgrade to your arrows. Like, what's going on here? Because mm-hmm. none of this makes any sense. Mm. To take game into the next level, that the side story as eloquently as you put it in Ghost of Tsushima needs to interweave with the main story and yeah. feel like part of a bigger story. Um, I think that's where the storytelling medium can probably mature into. And I'm See, like f- forward to that. Ghost of Tsushima, that wasn't really a long game. I, wouldn't, I wasn't spending hundreds of hours on that game. Mm. But I felt like it was the, almost the perfect length where I wasn't bored. And I didn't mind doing the side missions because it helped with the story. Yeah. Whereas like Valhalla, I played 140 hours of that game. And yeah, the side missions weren't like, you know, so, so annoying. Some of them were just really, this is a side mission I have to do just because well, I have we, to do it. We talked off air, but I didn't bring it up in what you've been playing because I haven't been playing Valhalla. Mm-hmm. I'm probably about 50% of the way through it. And I've just lost my way with it. It's just... I don't know. I'm not vibing with it. Maybe I had too much Assassin's Creed in 2020 and I need to just give it time to mature and I can, I'm can. i going to leave it on the hard drive and pick off bits as I go. Um, it's not one that you need gaming muscle memory for, I don't think, so much. No. But uh, yeah, I want to get the main story done. But I've not vibed with it and I, I honestly can't put my finger on why. It's like I like the setting. It's perfect for me. It's historical. It's UK. It should be great. Um... The actual character of Eivor, I like that I'm playing as the male. I think the voice acting is fantastic and he's got like yeah. a warmth to his voice that you can kind of bond with. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, when when you hear him smiling in his voice, his character's smiling, you know, because some things that happen in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, they're a bit sort of bizarre, aren't they, at times? And you can hear him laughing, oh, friend. And you can you think, oh, that, <laughs> that's really well voice acted. It's fantastic. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's like almost a perfect pudding. You followed the recipe to a T. Okay, you followed the instructions to a T, but you served me the cake. And although it's edible, I'm not thinking this is the best cake I've ever had. It's all right, but it's not the best cake I've ever had. And I think that sums up Valhalla. Um, But in a striking um, disagreement with me over on Twitter, Mr. Pumpkin, not messaged in in a while, but thank you for doing so. We miss you dearly. And uh, the Discord link's in the drop-down box. Whatever you need, friend. I hope you're well. I hope Christmas has been good. I hope New Year's been good to you. He says, uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is my game of the year. I love being a Viking. Yep. That was my number three. Number three choice. Valhalla. Yeah. I mean, of all the games I played, it's still one of the, you know, definitely top five. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, no. It 100% go to the Shima deserved that. At least in my opinion. Okay, who's next? Boba Loba. He goes, it comes as no surprise, but Warzone is my game of 2020. I put 538 hours into that alone. Best battle, uh, best battle royale game by far. Special mention to Lonely Mountain Downhill and Hot Shot Racing too. Oh, he played wow. a little bit of that, of the Hot Shot Racing. He showed us a clip. Oh, have I seen that? I don't know. It was on his Instagram. Oh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I remember that. I remember that. Okay. Um, oh, man, we messed up, man. What's up, friend? You had to do Boba Loba's special voice. Oh, I don't know what I'm thinking. Oh, okay. man. Well, it's all right. That's okay. Boba Loba doesn't just do <laughs> gaming comments. Boba Loba does the finest gaming comments money can buy. It'll come as no surprise, but Warzone is my game of 2020. I've put 538 hours into that alone. Best buy at a Royale game by far. Special mention to Lonely Mountains Downhill and Hot Shot Racing 2. (laughs) Bobaloba doesn't just do gaming comments. Bobaloba does the finest gaming comments. Amazing. (laughs) Who's next? It's my turn. Oh, is it yours? Have they heard enough of my voice? Who knows? All I know is that... Uh, where is he? Prince the Gamer? Badabinks, the retro gaming. <laughs> <laughs> I need to uh, wheel the teeth into. Prince the Gaming, go for it. Uh, there have been some great games this year with Cyberpunk, Tony Hawk's Remastered, and Avengers, just to name a few. Oh. My, 
Oh, I didn't say in the what you've been playing. I played Avengers and finished that as well. Oh yeah, you told me that before we started. I told yeah. you off air, so that's my yeah, fault. Yeah, yeah. But to anyone who's listening, forget the hype, forget the noise. Okay, Avengers is a damn good game. If you've played X Y Z hours on Warzone, <laughs> you, you ought to be hitting up Finster Gamer and playing some Avengers, Boba Loba, because it's your kind. He's got the he's got the Marvel trash all around his gaming area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Toxis just turned around and went, "Yeah, you have actually." And you got all this superhero round when well, you got a video game console and you're not playing Avengers. Let me check your pulse. That's right, Toxis. <laughs> he died two weeks ago, all right, from the neck down. Guy's <laughs> mental. Uh, yeah, so Avengers to name a few. Avengers, I'm a big fan of. The story alone is great. The story of Miss Marvel is fantastic. And the way the graphics have been drawn, it literally feels like it's in the same universe as the Spider Man on PlayStation. It's that, really? Oh, yeah. 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 And the people are like, oh, well, it looks like they caught the stunt doubles. And that's funny. And I got on board with that, you know, the space ball scene where they catch the stunt doubles. <laughs> and it's not, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's not Tony Stark out of the movies and it's not, you know, matey playing Thor and it's, you know, it's not all the bigger names that are in the movies. Well, it's not the big names in the Spider-Man game, but we all go, oh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. What, so are we, does that mean that we won't accept Tony Stark unless it's Robert Downey Jr. in the Spider-Man game? Or are we to accept Nolan North, who's a fantastic voice actor, who I took a while to get used to but i think he does a great job i think the standout um voice actor is the guy who does hulk um who also does joel in last of us for some reason now i normally know his name troy baker it's going to elude me there oh, for a minute yeah, yeah right he's fantastic okay he 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 plays he plays it down to a t and he's the one who i feel has the most beat to beat heartfelt moments with miss marvel um kamala khan he, really well done friend really well done so yeah and then once the end game's done there's plenty to go at there's going to be stories there's going to be more sort of earth in danger stories at the minute it's pretty much you know it's a bit grindy i'm not going to deny that but it gives you something to do on a nightly basis go on these missions with your friends as superheroes right we've talked before about marvel ultimate alliance it really feels like the next gen version of that but uh more epic in scale so I'll leave it there. I'll let you finish this comment now. I've chimed in with another game I've been playing. Finished and played. Yes, I am the man who finishes games. Game. If you want that T-shirt, if you think, oh, that, your name what? Look at me trying to pay all the Christmas bills for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> pay for all the sound effects at Christmas. Pay for Tom's wage. If you want the man who finishes games, you need to head over to Etsy, comment pictures, no space. It's one of the slogans of the show. Uh, you can get it on a T-shirt, get it on a mug, get it on a cake. I don't know about the cake, but it certainly can get it on a diaper. So if you've got a newborn coming into your life, the man who finished your games emblazoned on a reusable diaper, that's fine. We, we've enabled that. Anyway, enough chelp from me. Let's, I think you probably ought to start from the beginning again because Fince the Gamer, he deserves it. Oh, yeah, before I get lost, Fince the Gamer is also the head honcho of a website called Downright Circle Square. Have I said that right? Because I've given myself like, Damn I've given right my, ah! I've given myself this weird complex about that website. But it's fantastic. He did an Avengers review. He's a fan of the game. Mm-hmm. But recently, he's popped up one for Alien Isolation. Now it's on my shelf, and I keep meaning to bring it down. I've reread it, and he makes some salient points. And I encourage everyone to go there and check them out and dust it off. And give it a play. Anyway, I've finished now. Uh, What's he got to say for himself, Bobby? He says there have been some great games this year with Cyberpunk, Tony Hawk's Remastered, and Avengers, just name a few. My overall favorite game release in 2020, however, was the Resident Evil 3 remake. I'm a massive fan of the originals, and these recent remakes have not disappointed one bit. No. No. That's Resident Evil 3. It wasn't a full-price game, but it certainly had full-price fun in it. That's, yeah. You play that? I have it. I played the first two. They were great. Okay. Oh. I have three, but I haven't played it yet. Snap. <laughs> Got those naughty boys. Uh, up next, DH0702, masquerading as Oscar, but we'll give him a uh, new, new listener. listener. 
He says number one, Fall Guys. Number two, Mario Kart Live. Oscar X. Maybe he's like Xavier or something like that. Or it could be a kiss. I don't know, really. Maybe. Either one. I'll take it. Up next, Comic Comic Picture 79. Yep. He goes, okay, controversial opinion here, but I'm absolutely loving Cyberpunk in exactly the same way I love Skyrim. Not controversial on this show, friend. Mm -mm. Cyberpunk. Beautiful. Embodying my character and just having an absolute will of a time. I've had very little in the way of problems during my game, and I have to say it's just the coolest adventure game I've played in ages. Melee weapons for the win. Melee yeah. weapons for the win. I went through with a... Uh, I had a sword tucked in, ready to go, uh, mm-hmm. but I was a pistol guy when I played it, but when I did have a slish slash slash with the swords, it's a bit like most first-person games. It was fun, but it does feel a little bit sort of like I'm all over the place, you know? But it it is done pretty well, to be fair, and... I have it loaded, ready to go. You you need to hurry up and get to it because I can't. I do it after Spider Man, maybe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that'd be uh, that'd be a good totally, call. Totally different game. Like, to- yeah, that'd be great. I think with the way you're playing games at the minute, I think you could be one and done with one character playthrough quite quickly. Um, just so I can hear your opinion of it, and then you can have another playthrough as mm-hmm. because there's three starting characters that you can choose to play as, which kind of sort of unfolds different scenarios as you go through so yeah i'd be interested to see what your take is on that up next another uh, man that uh, i've interacted with quite a bit on instagram he's got his own shop it's every bit gaming but as far as i'm concerned he's a new listener, listener. Uh, if you want to get some rare stuff that he's imported from japan um which i've got a few bits and bobs off of him i've got the uh Got a couple of those PlayStation Pockets from him, a clear one and a white one, the PlayStation 1 memory card that was like the Dreamcast VMU. And I've also oh, wow. got a hold of him, um, a little Code Veronica plaque from Japan, a numbered limited edition release plaque, um, which is fantastic. Got sold with certain special editions of the game. He says The Last of Us 2. It was exactly what I wanted. Love every second of it. Closely followed by, though very different, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Remaster. What an absolute blast. Up next, uh, someone I've adopted seemingly, mm-hmm. which is fine by me. He's my, uh, it's me doing my bit as a celebrity. I need to adopt a child that's uh, <laughs> in danger. So I've adopted Ginger's uh, underscore games underscore room. He says, I'm so your redheaded stepchild. Yeah, keep him under the mm-hmm. cupboard. Keep him under the in the cupboard under the stairs. Mm-hmm. Uh, wheel him out every now and then when the paparazzi are around. Get the bonus <laughs> points. He says, "Either Last of Us Two or Ghost of Tsushima." Happy New Year, everybody! Happy New Year! Mm-hmm. Uh, first show of twenty twenty one. No doubt it's a car wreck because I've been let loose with my mouth when I shouldn't have been. Up next, Graham C, the nicest man on the internet, next to Stephen, um, but who's dripping in unofficial controller podcast merch he's even wearing the underpants yeah he's probably even nice. wearing that he's probably even bought the diaper to be fair and the socks and the so- <laughs> <laughs> he says i think it has to be animal crossing new horizons just because it came out globally in the right time in the pandemic but as a personal choice it has to be goes with Tashima. my most enjoyable game I played, I was hooked to spend over 100 hours taking pictures and just in awe of how amazing and beautiful it looked. That's Eva's game of the year, for sure, Animal Crossing. Yeah, well. Yeah, she put about $600 on that bad boy. I I misjudged that. I thought it was half that amount, which was still a crazy amount. I, I undersold it last episode because the conversation topic came up. I said, look at Eva, she's put 300 hours in. It's 600 hours. Unbelievable. Up next, Retro Gamer Thomas, a.k.a. RGT, as a gnome on the street. He's driving around for work right now. He's like, yeah, that's me. Oh, it is you. And there's your comment, RGT. He says, my favorite game of the year would probably be Streets of Rage 4. Great to have that series back and a great love letter to the originals. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater remakes were fantastic games and done so well. And also Spider-Man Mars Morales. What an introduction to the PS5. But one game I thought I'd never play, but was introduced to by young George in 2020, was Farming Simulator. 50 hours of joy in that game and can't wait to get back to it. Now hopefully work has died down a bit. (laughs) Crops have died. Uh, You don't get me online very often. All right, play multiplayer games, but you did. 
for this. And now you've left me in a field. My sandwiches have gone off. My tractor needs a service and the crops are dead. Uh, anyway, he says another great year for games and awesome having the podcast to listen to each week, chatting on the Discord with a great bunch of people. Very true words. What a great and gallant guy. There's a man who upholds and embodies the spirit of the unofficial controller. Uh-huh. He says, here's to 2021. Happy New Year, everyone involved in this wonderful podcast. Well, thank you. El Buccio sends his Mexican finest. Tom, oh, I was meant to read his letter out. Do you know what? It was a moment in time. It's gone. Okay. Maybe okay. next week, you know, when next we announce, week. yeah, in the news, when we announce the winner of the two prizes yeah. and we do all that. Yeah, absolutely. See, yeah. this is a bonus episode. It's not really episode one, it's episode coda. It's like a, pro- a, like a prologue. Mm hmm. Yeah, Shoes of Rage 4 is number five on my list. It was great. I loved okay. it. Really, It was really good, really good. I hope maybe they make Golden Axe now. Well, we'll see. Up next, we got Gaz Loves Games. Uh, for me, it was Planet Coaster. Uh, the Planet Coaster c- console release. I hadn't played it before. I hadn't played it before on PC. But it's a throwback to a modern style as the sequel to Roller Coaster Tycoon I always wanted. From building a park or riding the rides, it delivers a great sim experience. That's on oh, sale now on the PSN store. Actually. Wait, one thing I would say about that game is it's going to go under a lot of people's radars, but it is absolutely fantastic. It's as deep as you want it to be. If you want to involve, if you want to theme a ride and have like a certain thing pop up at a certain time. It can be done, or you can just build a, 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 a coaster out of the catalog that they've got. All right. You, if you don't, if you want to, don't want to get stuck building chain drives to lift it up and all that other ramble, you can just build one. All right. But all the scenery you can possibly imagine to theme an area, Wild West, Pirate, Fantasy, whatever, with more packs coming, so you really can go to town on it. It really is. Oh, mate, it's beautiful, and and the the theme song alone. Really? Deser- deserves an award. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. I tried to download it, but it's not actually a proper release tune. So oh. I'll have to yeah, go to YouTube and get the MP3 trans- transfer over. But yeah, it's, um, it's oh, that's, great. That's cool. Yeah, it's beautiful. He has something else to say. He says, the worst game was 2020, the year where nobody wins. That's absolutely fact. right. Oh, and Comic Pictures said special mention for Ori and Lonely, Down, Lonely Mountains Downhill. So we forgot that from the top. Mm-hmm. Um, see Pliskin, the Irish beef. He says, uh, tough to see, tough to say, seeing how I haven't played many games this year, but I'd say that would go to Animal Crossing's New Horizon. Only just got the game this week, but I really enjoy the relaxed nature of the title, how addicting it can be if you have a day off work or responsibilities. The other two would be Spider-Man Mars Morales, but that's essentially an expansion, so it doesn't really count. I don't know. It kind of stands up on its own two feet, to be fair. See, but I see where you're going with that. And Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 plus 2, but that's a remake, and one that requires a lot more learning to get the most out of it. Yeah, do you know what? He's not wrong. Um, but uh, he's never wrong, C. Pliskin. But, uh, yeah, so I don't know what he's picking there. I think he's picking Animal Crossing's New Horizon. So we ought to do a tally up, really, and see which one wins. But to be honest, we're probably not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Young Adult Next, Man, young adult a.k.a. Man. Wan gd 30 ce 12 what's he got to say for himself? Would probably have to be Red Dead Redemption 2. I literally played that game all 2020 and finally beat it in August, I think. it was a good. It was a good story. Fun side missions, killing bandits, bears, also fun fights while getting ambushed. All these factors definitely made it made the game a almost lifelike simulator. I like to think of it as the new Oregon Trail. <laughs> I used to be in a posse online where we role played. That was also definitely fun, fun climbing the ranks and whatnot. Good times. Wow, young adult man. He's certainly got his mileage. I know a lot of listeners, they've uh-huh. they've had their fair share of money's worth out of Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, so that was gamer for one. phenomenal. Uh, I never did any of the online because I said to you, I think Tom and I got some grief and I was like, that's why I don't do online, sack it off. But uh, I know a lot of people have had some fun with that. Up next, Italy's finest, <laughs> because we're a worldwide show. We don't just, uh, we're a New York-based podcast. It's uh, Bada Bingster Retro Gaming. So, 
I think mine has to be days gone. So I know it didn't come out of this year, but I've put so many hours into it. And to be fair, I'm enjoying it a lot. So I'm looking forward to 2021, hopefully can upgrade my PS4 set to PS5. Uh, on a different note, I want to say thank you to everyone in the Unofficial Controller Podcast Discord. As this year, you've helped me out a lot. Uh, Italian flag. Uh, everyone start for the Italian National Anthem, sir? And sit down for the national anthem, sir. And a trophy emoji, sir. Uh, he's he's remembered his flag. He's he's um, he, I tell you what, he's a good egg, isn't he? He's someone yeah, else yeah. who he, he upholds the value. He's he's what I would call the next generation. We've got the original series one, the original yeah. series on a, on a glorious bar stewards. Baddest Binks to retro gaming. He is like we got We got We should Jean Luc Picard. We got to figure something out. Got it. What could they be? Or oh, what, we're going to have two secretive clubs. Oh, my goodness gracious me. Right? I love clubs, man. <laughs> There'd been a lot of them in high school. Like a, One of them was not going to school club. That was my favorite club. <laughs> so any kids that are listening, you, well, you can't get away with it in this day and age. You can't no go to jail. But, uh, yeah, it was... Uh, they that text was you a... now. If you miss one class, they text your mom. I know. I used oh, to yeah. get a, a mail. I used to go in a mailbox and take it out. No one knew. I never even got that. Oh, wow. Okay. When I went to school, as long as you came home not dead, you know, <laughs> job, job done. <laughs> oh, Max, we got Eslo and Medina. Eslo and Midna. Eslo it's been a while since they've commented it in. I was going to put an APB out for them, but do you know what? They're fine. They're well. They're good. A lot was said about Nintendo having a quiet year in 2020, but I played my Switch far more than my PS4, uh, Animal Crossing, Mario 3D All-Stars, Xenoblade Chronicles Definit- Definitive Edition came out, some more ports from older systems, but I had a lot of fun with, throw in a few indies and third-party games such as Ori and the Will of the Wisps and Street of Rage 4. I've had a great 2020 in gaming, but my late game entry for Game of the Year will be Hades. I've only picked it up during Christmas break, but it's an incredible game and a Switch console exclusive for now. If you haven't played it, I can't recommend it highly enough. I've heard a lot of good things about Hades. A lot of good things. So you know, keep your eyes peeled. If you're a Switch gamer, pick it up. You might be looking for a game right now. You've got some money burning a hole in your back pocket because Father Christmas and all that other ramble, or Santa Claus, St. Nick, Santa, as we call him here in the United States of America, Santa. 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 Um, he's brought you uh, some more money than cents and if you've not got bills to pay and you're not a proper adult or even if you are and to hell with it you know mm-hmm. get yourself a copy of Hades up next Roast Space Monk he says uh, my top five games of 2020 <laughs> what the hell <laughs> oh Jesus Call of Duty Warzone <laughs> What's wrong with you, boy? Resident Evil 3, Last of Us 2, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. Much like Adam back in the day, I can agree with some of that, but not all of that, <laughs> Pro Space 1, all right? There's a, there's a deep cut. Um, whereas I can agree with everything Adam says these days, I can't agree with anything you're saying. But if, if Warzone's giving you time and pleasure, then it's a good game. Um, true. Might not be my cup of tea, but that doesn't mean it's not yours. Different strokes for different folks. Now, here's another man who I believe we need to wheel out the uh, El Buccio. He's going to be furious. It's like you're spending money like water. You know, it's only January, but <laughs> cute the sound effect, Bobby. It's a new, new listener. <laughs> it's uh, Daniel Sonic underscore 87. He says, The Legend of Heroes, Trails of the Cold Steel 4. I'm absolutely sure that this is this. Okay. I, I, I've, I don't know what the Uparas are referring to, but I brought it down as it was on Instagram, exactly as it is here. Mm-hmm. So maybe Daniel can reach out to us on the Discord or on the socials and let us know. Uh, oh, um, Digital Monkery told us that we'd already given him about six new listener claps. Didn't <laughs> 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 they on the Discord? Bless him. Um, there's someone else who upholds the values. He's on there. He's, uh-huh. he's next generation, but probably... 
an unglorious bastard, and I forget, I probably insulted him. He's like, George, I'm, I'm like your brother. Like, I'm really sorry. Uh, <laughs> since you've gone to New York, you've totally forgotten who, who people are. Up next, the beloved, uh, another member of the Discord, who's uh, very diligently on there all the time, Elliot Hughes. He says, oh, Bobby, add Discord. You'd imagine for this much community and fun and friendship, there'd be a charge. How much does it cost to go on the Discord? It's, it's uh, free. How much is it? It's absolutely free. And there's El- nothing free in New York, bro. So I tell you, you what, El Buccio is going to be furious. He hasn't seen... I, I was meant to put an Excel spreadsheet together to detail the show's costs. When I put on there, there's no charge for any of the community features that this show's <laughs> got. He's going to go screwy. Um, but there you go. He's bought the show now. He's going to have to live with it. And he's going to have to get his checkbook out and do some more uh, Mexico to Florida boat runs. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm for saying. For sure. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the beloved Elliot Hughes, a.k.a. Elio Hughes, he says, I, The Last of Us 2 or Firewatch. I'm guessing he's <laughs> talking about games he's played in 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, but he says he kind of wants to say Firewatch. You know, I would even be happy if it's just a game he opened. I, I'd be satisfied. Oh, well, he opened and played Last of Us 2 because me and yeah. him, we even, okay? Mm-hmm. Agent, a private message or three about it. He, Ooh. Was, he was like, how much longer? <laughs> like, just enjoy it, Elliot. God's sake. Yeah. No one's got a monopoly <laughs> on your time, friend. Uh, but he's right. I mean, he messaged me around the section. There's the there's a village section in it. I don't want to ruin mm-hmm. it because you haven't played. Yeah, it. yeah. But, uh, I was thinking, this is the end game. Is this the end game? No, no, far from it. It goes on and on and on past that. So hopefully, oh, wow. it out because fant- I think he said he had finished it now. But yeah, fantastic. Uh, Batmull, who's next? Yeah, yep. Set, Haven't oh. really played many new games of 2020 due to due to Warzone and Destiny 2 taking up so much of my time. But if I had to pick, I'd definitely go for Cyberpunk. Just it's just a great game, even though a small amount of base Xbox One issues I have. If he can play it on an Xbox One, Mark One, Launch One, there's not that much wrong with Cyberpunk, friend. Um, get it played. Fantastic game. Oh, and they've done all the patches, and I'm sure there'll be one coming sort of early Jan as well, just to uh-huh. sort out those last few issues. By the time you play it, you'll be like, seamless experience, George. I think it was <laughs> yeah. fantastic. Didn't have any problem. I don't know. Nothing at about. all. It was seamless from start <laughs> to finish. All the DLC had dropped. The world was alive. It was everywhere. Uh, me and Tom had a detailed chat about it. <laughs> You're gone. He's gone. He's corpse. Oh. Me, me and Tom had a detailed talk about it last episode. and uh, Yeah, some salient points to be made. I mean, my criticisms, they're not about the glitches and all that other ramble. Do you know what it is? What it is. Mine uh-huh. were more that it's, um, it could just do with a little bit more interactivity. And I think... Um, I think that um, Adam mentioned it on the Discord. If there was some extra distractions, you know, like in GTA Five, you can go to the cinema, you can do this, you can do that, the other. It just grounds you in the world a bit more. And I wanted more sort of animation specific, single first person animations in there for going to the Ripper Dock and eating food and drinking drinks and all that other ramble. If that was there, uh, and it. <laughs> You know, if, if they could make that game work in VR, I tell you what, it'd be one of those games that you wouldn't come out of. It'd be one of those first games that people just forgot. That would be... Bro, that would probably be a, a, I played an it, experience. Yeah, I played it in a darkened room. Um, all the lights off, TV on, maybe like a small like light in the corner. Mm-hmm. Because it's first person. I went to bed feeling like I had lived in this world. Cyberpunk was fantastic. It really was like, yeah, it's a game and it's got its problems like a lot of games have. But if you just let go of the safety ropes and fall all in on the game, oof, baby, you know, I hadn't played a game like it in a long time. So this is why I said to you, I, I, I picked up Witcher 3 just before the PS5 launch. And it was probably too big a meal for me to tackle at that point in time. So I wanted to get my, try and clear down some back catalog so i could go into the ps5 relatively hungry only for me to turn the ps3 on all over again but uh i'm a dirty dirty man i'm horrible really but uh <laughs> i'm horrible uh the um i found that to be like Geralt 
was all over the place with the controls. Like I was speaking to a woman, I ended up stood in a fish barrel and I was like, oh my goodness gracious me, this isn't for me. He's all over the place. But uh, now that I've experienced the eloquence of the storytelling in cyberpunk, I'm willing to go back to Witcher 3 and live through it, live through some of those issues. And probably because my character wasn't leveled up, I didn't have like don't stand in fishbowl, uh, you know, attachment to my arm mm-hmm. or another rammel like that. I don't know what I was doing wrong, but I want to experience more of CD Projekt Red storytelling because Cyberpunk was so beautifully done at times. Like there's a couple of love story threads, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to speak to them more on the phone when I was away from them in the yeah, game. Yeah. And I wanted to hear more of what they had to say. And it wasn't like one of those wham, bam, you know, a lot of games, they like women are treated as throwaway objects, so to speak. And, and relationships are very sort of fizzle and pop. And you don't really feel any connection, especially when they try and transmute those over to games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla had a couple of relationships you could get into, but they were so wooden and fake that I didn't yeah. really feel any affection to them. And the NPCs, even though it was someone you were interacting with, they were so badly drawn. You were like, oh my goodness gracious me. And I didn't even, I went, I thought it was a mission to go looking for a comb in a waterfall. I think I've mentioned to this to yeah, you before. Yeah. And I ended up spending the night on a blanket with this woman. I'm thinking, if I'd have known that's what all that was leading to, I wouldn't even have got the comb. Yeah. Uh, but in Cyberpunk, I'd have dived down the Mariana Trench to get that woman a comb. See, because uh, I think like in The Witcher, the, the storylines and the the side missions are just as good as the ones that were in Skyrim because they weren't just pointless side missions. They kind of had to do with whatever quest you were kind of doing. So whatever role you were taking on kind of worked like, like Ghost of Tsushima. Like Valhalla, like you said, it's just like, okay, really? This is, that's the story mission? That's why I wish more games did. So if Cyberpunk is doing this, you know, I'm excited to I, I feel like, I hope that it's not been overhyped by the time, because it was, you know, let's face it, the CD Projekt Red's marketing division did a cracking job of hyping up that game. Right? Uh-huh. <laughs> and I don't want to feel like I've added weight to that. So when you play it, you're like, George, this Well, no, I mean, when you recommended um, Murder Soul Suspect, I thought it was great. I never even really paid attention to it at all until you mentioned it. To be but fair, like you said, it's the storytelling in the game was good. It really was good. Really good. I didn't platinum it because I missed a couple of things and, and a couple of glitches happened. I couldn't be bothered to go back to it. But if they hadn't, if I hadn't had those issues, I would have absolutely maxed that game out mm-hmm. because I thought it was fantastically done. Um, I listen to your show. Anyone who doesn't know, you've got your own podcast. It's called Bobby's World Podcast. You change your theme music. I've been meaning to mention to this mm-hmm. year a couple of times. I like the old music, but I'm a man of habit, okay? I'm a man of habit. Yeah, um, I don't know. I might not change it back to season, season three. I don't know. I, I figured because like, the whole retro look, I figured I'd throw some retro mu- music in there. Synth hey, the, wave. Listen, the, the music. Harvey retro. I don't know where you get the music from, but the music's fantastic, okay? My nephew did it. He did your he did your season one music as well. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, um, that trophy pop tune you've got it it was really good. But this second one is just a standalone piece of music. It's fantastic. Your nephew, <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. I guess he's working for Jay Z or something. But <laughs> uh, you know, it's fantastic music. It's just different, and it took me caught me a little bit unawares. But um, I forget where I was going with this now. Um, completely, you heard something. You, I heard you mention something on there, and now I've totally forgotten what it was. Oh, I was going to say to people, if obviously you're a co-host on the show, but you're a podcasting celebrity here in New York, and you've got your own show, Bobby's World Podcast, and all that other ramble. Like I say, we can't pause and rewind. I'm not going to uh, get El Buccio to edit the show, so that was a, a rather strange stream of consciousness that's now been exposed to people. And it's I probably wonder, time. <laughs> I wonder what the hell I was talking about. There was a, a solid point, um, probably reasonably well made. But God knows, um, it was about video games. Thankfully, it was relatively on topic because this show's about <laughs> video games. But uh, anyway, <coughs> get get El Buccio on the phone because we're going to wheel the po- going to wheel the uh, sound effect out one last time. It's uh, we've got a new, new listener. listener, probably blatantly here only for the pop, so we might as well do it right. They're the V P Y W podcast. I think they reached out to us on Instagram. They said Persona 5 Royal, hands down, smiley face. 
So I, I haven't listened to their show. Normally I make the effort to go off and listen. I literally saw that the comment was on there today. So I'll probably make the time this week to go off and listen. Before you go off and check their show out, if you've not already subscribed and listened to Bobby's World Podcast, a fine uh, uh, show by the man himself, Bobby. Um, you're already listening to this show, so I can't hype this show enough, but tell all your friends and neighbours. That guy over the road that you barely speak to, he needs a new gaming podcast. He needs an official control of gaming podcast in his life. Get him to subscribe. Get him to tell all his friends and family to subscribe. Then let his wife out the boot of your car, or the trunk as we call it here in the United <laughs> States of America. Uh, and... Um, try and smooth it all over with the local police forces. Um, and then, once you've done all that, maybe have a little peruse at the PYW podcast, see what that's got uh, going on. But I want this year to be the year I start and finish Persona 5. I'm going to make the effort. Is it long? <laughs> they all are, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've had about three safe files of Persona 4 on PlayStation 2, I think I had one on Vita that for some reason I lost and then started again. Um, yeah, it's a long game. Um, it's fantastic. And Persona 5 is like an even slicker version of that. So I've heard lots of good things about it. It's a, it's a Japanese game, RPG. So it's turn-based, which I know you're probably not a fan of. Um, there you go. So that was a cat in here trying to climb up on the... Tom's vintage record player, which probably go go down like a dose of salts. That's the feature done. Uh, it sounds like there's a, there's a there's a real myriad of stuff there that people have gone for, and and fair play to them. Normally at this point in the show, Bobby, I would say to you, let's find out what he's been up to. But this week he's on holiday. Trace Ray, throwback to series one, and him have just been taking some much needed time off at home. He's probably cleaned the inside of the Bluebird out, um, emptied the ashtray. It's the world's biggest ashtray as well. So <laughs> he, he probably filled about six landfills with the ash that came out of it. But one other thing that we do, and we've not done it for a while, and soon as it's Christmas, people have been putting up their festive pickups. If you've got a pickup, gaming or geek related or literally anything, we've had all sorts associated with this hashtag from real cowboy boots to an actual car to the fish stingray. If you type hashtag stingray's boot, in on Instagram, which we will do now. If I spell it right, it's not Stongray's boots. It's uh, Stingray's boot. People actually follow this hashtag, would you believe it or not? It comes up and says. Um, yeah, you can follow if you want to. Yeah, I'm following it too. So it's a guy called Retro Fred is the first name at the top of the list. If you click yeah. recent, we can go through. First in the boot. Oh! Bada bingster. Oh, I'm going to have to do this in here. In here. I'll say, but a big star retro gaming, sir. I uh, made another box for one of my favorite SNES games. I used to love the cartoon that reminded me of Sunday mornings with my bro. He's got a homemade copy of Looney Tunes Roadrunner. Um, he makes these boxes for his collection, they're fantastic. It looks good, they really do. You know, perfection personified. He's gone for the European box art as well, so fair play to him. He's living that dream. So, what you do is you take a picture, you put it on Instagram be it a game, something you got for Christmas, whatever it is, you're going out around the thrift shops or the flea markets or the car boots or the charity shops when they're open, or maybe your beloved's got you something or you've bought a brand new game. It doesn't even have to be retro tat. Maybe you've even bought yourself a fine ham, okay? And you want that to get right out on air and get me and Bobby to react to it. Put hashtag Stingray's boot on the Instagram post. We will see it. We will talk about it. We will give you your 10 penny pop. Um... Game Racer. It's got a mega CD game here. Now, I saw some gameplay of this the other day. It's Starblade. I don't think I've got this on mega CD, but it's a... Um, if memory serves, it's like an arcade-based 3D vector um, space shooting game. Um, looked quite good. It's also thrown in a copy of uh, Sonic CD. CD. Yeah, Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom. Uh, that's the theme tune that you got in America. We we didn't get that here. Who's next? Rad Bash Gaming. He picked up some digital pickups. He got uh, Disaster Report 4, uh, Ultra Despair Girls, and Untitled Goose Game. He's even putting his digital games in the bit. I've only known from, Bada, from uh, Boba Loba. Which one? Untitled Goose Game? Yeah. Hmm. Must be an unlockable skin in Warzone. 
Game Race is back with another Mega CD game. Uh, Sylphied? Sylphied? Never heard of it. But Up next, a prolific Stingray's boot man. The Barber Who Games. I hope you're yeah. doing well, sir. He's got a Vita game, Yamawari, Midnight Shadows. He's got Kinetica, which I believe Kinetica is the game that they made before God of War on the PlayStation 2. That was how they got some of the tech work in Kinetica. Now, I might be wrong. Really? Message in and tell me, but I believe that was the first game out of Sony Santa Monica or, or what would become Santa Monica Studios and also <laughs> a copy of Roadkill on the Xbox. Radbash Gaming again with a load of pops and more DVDs than probably even Stingray's got and a couple of uh, snapbacks, PlayStation 1 and I don't know what the other one is. My eyes oh, fell. he's got a history of violence. That's a, I like that movie a lot. Hmm. He's even got a new headset as well. Yeah. And some Avengers pins. Yeah. Uh, there's us. Shameful glory hunting pigs that we are. <laughs> Harvey Retro's got himself. Yeah, this is awesome. This it is, is awesome. isn't it? A Necker Martin McFly. Um, he got that with his Christmas money, I think, but it comes with all mm-hmm. the accessories multiple hands for guitar playing, uh, him with shades, the backpack, the skateboard, the whole lot. Game Racer showing Starblade on the Sega Mega CD. Maybe this was the game I was getting confused about. Anyway, I'm, I'm rattling through them because we've, we've got to keep the pace up. Uh, Badabings to Retro Gaming. Got a copy of Minority Report on the PS2. This is a great little game. Seth, the combat system is so good and the camera is not clunky whatsoever. Therefore, I recommend giving it a go. Um, I've always RPG. avoided that, but now I'm really? going to pick it up. Yeah, I'll pick it up. Ooh, the movie was, the movie was kind of odd. Hmm. Who's next? Uh, RGT. What's he, he picked up? Uh, Resistance, Retribution on PSP, and for Xbox, he picked up Blood Week. Now, one thing I messaged him on this, I direct messaged him when I saw he had picked it up. Resistance Retribution has got features where if you plug the PSP into your PlayStation 3 with a copy of Resistance 2 in the PlayStation 3 and a copy of Resistance Retribution in the PSP, you unlock different levels and features on both copies of the game wow that's wild oh the man with the facts doesn't have much of a life but he knows some random tat about a 400 year old game there you go <laughs> at rad bash gaming he picked up watchdog legions on ps4 uh J- Django fett Django action fett. figure yeah that looks pretty with, cool yeah it does actually uh, loads of ps2 games oh yeah uh that no, that's Bada Bingster with those PS2 games. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. He's been going all in on the PS2. He collection. really has, I don't, He I, really listen, has. These games are 50p to a pound each, and there's hours of fun in there. Hours of fun. Yeah, Red and, Fractions 2 is great. Yeah. Even if you look at it from a sort of... Uh, like, I'm just sort of curious what this game is like, point of view. And then if... Um, because I started playing... Over Christmas, I started playing... Um, the Sony Cambridge game, um, 24, from the TV show tie-in. It's a Sony exclusive. It's fantastic. It's so well done. It really is. And if you play it in progressive scan, which the PS2 can do, it looks like a very early PlayStation 3 game. It's in the same vein as that Ghost Hunter game I told you about and another game that came out of that same Uh. studio, I think, called Primal. I don't know if you ever played that on PS2. But uh, fantastic games. Fantastic Can't say enough good stuff about those. Mr. Mystery, a long supporter of the show. He's in the Discord. He doesn't say much. He just likes to watch. He's got himself an Oculus Quest 2. Um, I've asked for some info about that because I've only ever experienced PlayStation VR. VR, so it'd be nice to see. Radbash Gaming, how does he afford all this? He definitely has a deal with Stingray. He does, doesn't he? He does. Because this hashtag sure. came about because we wanted to see what other people have been picking up. Because Stingray doesn't just visit us. He visits everybody. Mm-hmm. He's a man out of time, in time. He's everywhere. Uh, more pops than you can shake a stick at and a load of other stuff. So fair play to him. Here's another loyal listener of the show. I'm doing live likes as well, so I'm liking as I see them. Um, Ozcat.tv. Hope you're doing well, sir. He's picked up... Uh, what's this he's picked up here? So Claire Redfield necklace. That's a good necklace, yeah. That's really good. He's a very cool guy. He's at Ozcat.tv. Who's next? Oh, uh, the Barber Who Games. There's a game up. I need to scratch off my list. Judgment on the PS4, which is from the Accuser Studio. 
What else has he got? Uh, Grand Theft Auto Five for a PS4, and I think it's a Pokemon card. But I don't know. I could be wrong. Oh uh, yeah, is it Pokemon or is it Magic the Gathering? I don't know. I think it might be my. I don't know. I don't. I I have no clue. It's a card. Yeah, this is cool. Coming up next, Harvey Retro. What? Oh how, my how, god! How dope is this, right? If you like. Oh, my God, that's fantastic. So he's yeah. got Laura Palmer. Now, I've got that Laura Palmer wrapped up in the cellophane from um, no way. Twin, Twin Peaks. Yeah, I've got a, it's a, I own three Pop Funkos, Laura Palmer, Dale, um, and Robocop. Wow, and that's awesome. he's got here, he's got the Laura Palmer I've got wrapped in the cellophane. He's also got Bob, and he's all, which is a, <laughs> a Christmas decoration. I don't want to do too many spoilers because... You know, you've got to watch Twin Peaks to, yeah, to you have to watch to, to yeah. you know, and to say too much would be to ruin it. He's also got uh, fictional hotel souvenirs of uh, the Great Northern Hotel, which is the hotel in Twin Peaks, and he's also got <laughs> a Christmas decoration of Laurel Palmer in a bloody bag, <laughs> uh, which is fantastic. You know, it's really? all go, it's all go down at the Harvey Retro household. Digital Monkery, uh, he's got some more um, games for his Evercade. A lot of people hype in the Evercade. They pick up the cartridge selections as they come out and uh, seem to thoroughly enjoy it. It's one that's passed me by, but... Uh, wow, he's even got the Dizzies on there, Codemasters on the Evercade, which they're calling the Oliver Twins collection. That, that's actually, from a digital collection point of view, that's actually really quite cool. Comic Pictures! Yeah, this is awesome. Father Christmas has been. He's got him. Yeah. Is that a Pop Funko? I think it's like a, like a special size. Wow, that's fantastic! Because it's it's larger than your standard one, but it's yeah. it's chromed as well, which is awesome for the wow, Mandalorian. It's super fans. shiny! Look at the reflection. Yeah, I know. He's got so he's got a Mandalorian clutching Grogu, which is now the name, the official name of Baby Yoda. Uh, that looks great, fantastic. I think his beloved uh, wife, you got him that. Yes, so she did. Shout out to her, and shout out to Comic Pictures for all the support. Shout out to really all the the original season one homies uh rgt roast space monk um boba loba he organizes and, and sorts the discord i think retro Finch gamer the thomas gamer. Finch yep. the gamer retro gamer thomas and uh comic pictures uh, doing some of the uh moderation behind the scenes as well and there's countless others that i've probably missed out but it was just a quick flabble out of me really for for just to be grateful and and try and stay humble uh living the life in a, an apartment in new york it's it's, it's not easy uh but I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> Harvey Retro, he's crikey. I tell you what, Father Christmas was busy. He, he, for a grown man, he got an awful lot of presents. Mm-hmm. He's got a PlayStation clock yeah, in the shape of a PS4 controller clock. Dual Shock 4, yeah, yeah. that's uh, quite cool. RGT got a visit. He got a, uh, <laughs> I want this. I've been watching one on eBay as well, but his one's in far better, Nick. He's got Ratchet and Clank. Uh, is it Cracking Time? Yeah, Cracking yes. Time Special Edition. Uh, for the PS3, I've been mighty into collecting PS3 collector sets recently. They've kind of passed a lot of people by, so they're quite cheap on eBay. Uh, Monopoly Arcade, um, which looks fun. Looks like a fun way of playing Monopoly. An 80s quiz, a dual sense charging dock, and he's got himself a copy of uh, Star Wars Squadrons on PlayStation 4. I also know he's a proud owner of a PlayStation VR, which would be the way to play it, one would imagine. I need to go back to that again. A lot of games all came out at once at that point in time, and I got a bit swamped. Game Racer's got a... What's he got here? It's a Sega Saturn uh, controller. Well, so it is. So you can do wireless on the Saturn. Yeah. Or six, it yeah. comes with a USB stick to go wireless on whatever console you choose, I'd imagine. It's pretty, pretty cool. cool. Yeah, very cool. The Barber Who Games. You got Look a PS5. Got... Yeah, what games has he got? Sat Boy. Yeah, I got that. He's Warhammer, got Warhammer, Godfall, Planet Coaster, Dirt Five, and WRC Nine, the official game. So, and that's a pretty cheeky it's launch, nice, really, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I've only got two of the games that he's picked up. So, yeah, nice. I don't know if that Warhammer games had a US uh, UK release, but uh, there you go. Radbash Gaming. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna swear, Jesus. I don't know what. That is, but that Splatterhouse, whatever is in that box, that looks. I really want to know what's in that box. That just caught my eye. 
Here's someone. Daddy Zilla posting up a picture of Devin Zilla. I hope the Z- Zillas are well. We know Daddy Zilla got the Rona, but he messaged me and said he was okay. Um, so the family have had the Rona, but they've they've got over it. Um, Devin Zilla's got a camera, Sony Handycam for Christmas. Um, Daddy Zilla says, don't forget to remember the moment he got famous. So Devin Zilla hopefully one day becoming a, a well-known, renowned director, probably of monsters, monster mm-hmm. monster films, which... Uh, which would be fantastic coming of age story. Right, Bash Gaming again. Picked up more stuff. Uh, Dunder Mifflin. There's these new pajamas. I have no idea what the hell's going on there. He's also got. Isn't that from the office? Uh, US office, maybe. I've never watched it. Yeah, I thought that's that's the company. I could be wrong, though. But the Wings the Retro Gaming's got a copy of Resident Evil Vendetta and a copy of Murder in Venice, hmm. the Nintendo DS, my friend. Um, Bada Bingster has got... He's uh, on a tear here. He has. He's got a Super Nintendo pickup here. He's got one, two, three box games, Mickey Mania, Tetris, and Dr. Mario, and Kickoff. And he's got a whole smorgasbord of loose carts. I see Jungle Strike. I see Urban Strike. The Adam see, Family. Uh, that Mario Paint. Could well be. Uh, Star Fox. Street Fighter. Looks ah, like. I see Illusion of Time. He's also got a universal adapter, which allows you to play imports. He's got two imports. He's got Adam's Family. And oof, I don't know what that other import is, but you've got Street Fighter, the original Mortal Kombat with Sans Blood on the Super Nintendo. I think I said Illusion of Time. Um, is that Metroid in the bottom left there next to the console? Probably. My eyes are failing me. Uh, Game Racer's got himself a Microsoft Sidewinder Force Feedback 3D FX Voodoo Steering Wheel. Barbaro Games, what's he got here, Bobby? He has... No, what what Barbaro Games? That's not next. I've done the steering wheel, and then I moved on to the Barbaro Games. He's got Logan's Shadow. Here's the funny thing. I guess this is where, for me next, is Retro Visions. He has uh, an Atari pamphlet for the educator. And then <laughs> next, I have Harvey Retro with his PS2. He got uh, SX, SSX, the snowboarding game. Oh, okay. So I'll just do a quick run through. Rad Bash mm-hmm. again. Um, he got a Wi Fi extender and uh, some <laughs> tap from Dragon Ball Z. Harvey Retro got SmackDown, Here Comes the Pain, and WWE 2K14. Uh, Radbash has had enough. I'm going to do a Tom here. No more Radbash because there's so much. Um, Radbash, Radbash. Barbaro Games. He's got some N64 carts. Let me know when you're tied up with me. Devin Zilla, we're back to November the 20th, so we'll do like three more. Um, and I think that's a fair run through. Um, Devin Zilla's got some carded monster stuff, I believe. Final Faction. I don't know what any of this is. I'll maybe show my age or lack of intelligence and education. Um, Daddy Zilla's got uh, pledges on the cooker top. He's cooking up a retro storm. It's 12 minutes mm-hmm. past 12 on the cooker. It's a throwback to the good old days. Uh, Harvey Retro's got a copy of the Tomb Raider trilogy on PS3. I keep meaning to pick this up because I've got these spread across PS2 and PS3. Mm-hmm. Um, the PS2 does a great job of legend and anniversary but i think i've got tomb raider underworld on ps3 so i'd quite like to get all of them on one disc one thing, yeah and be the best version you can get because yeah. i remember those games being fantastic um it's a trappy he's got watchdog legions on the ps4 and i think we'll call that the full turn of the wheel yeah. i think we've done a more than eloquent run through thank you for everybody um, we'll be on that more often now. Things got a little bit crazy here. We couldn't have hashtags because the American election and all that other stuff that goes yeah. with it. So we apologize if we got a bit behind. We apologize if we missed you out. Don't forget, everybody else saw it. You just didn't get your read out on air. Um, that That's probably not okay. And for that, I apologize. There's also a listener stingray section in the Discord if you've got something really cool that you want us to react to immediately. If you want me and Bobby to get down out of our... Uh, crow's nest and go oh look at that that's pretty cool 
you know, slap it in there. We'll be there. If you're not on there, you can't show us your treasures, can you? You can't show us your Very treasures. True. You've got to wait and be patient and do the hashtag Stingray's Boot on Instagram, which doesn't always get read out on air. For that, I apologise. For everybody that didn't make it on air, I'm sorry. Keep going. We'll be revisiting it in every week or every couple of weeks from now on in. So definitely put your pickups on there. Because I, for one, like to see what people have been picking up. It makes me, me feel less of a weirdo um for going out and getting a steel book of 24 on the playstation 2 <laughs> which i ordered the other day i also found i've also been getting into collecting um collector's editions on the playstation 2 because i think there is about in the uk at least um obviously i have to get them sent over sent there and then sent over it cost me an arm and a leg but um pal steel books there was only about maybe 10 max i know there was you had of- steel books on the ps2 yeah yeah exactly but there weren't many there was, um, let's do a run through now because yeah, everyone who's remember. listening, everyone who's listening is like, yeah, George, I want to know about Steelbooks on the PlayStation 2. That's why I listen to a, a podcast about Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. There was 24, there was Godfather, there was Hitman, there was Resident Evil 4, there was um, 24, King Kong, Peter Jackson's King Kong. And I think there was a couple of others. So I only need maybe those two other random titles and I've got the full PS2 Steelbook That's set. That's crazy. I never even knew they, they existed. I think most people are now reaching to their phones or their laptops or their social media devices to send me a message to say, George, you need a girlfriend or a hobby that's not collecting PS2 Steelbooks. The only... Never PS1 had the long boxes? Now we didn't get them here. Uh, see, I only have two. I only have Resident Evil and um, Tomb Raider. In the UK, we got um, their own... In the US, you have them in what's called CD dual cases. Yes. Apart from the long boxes, which is similar to the Mega CD got over here for some games. Uh-huh. But for the majority... So the PlayStation had these... It had a couple of different PAL cases. One, it had like a... a, a gray plastic border that went around the outside of the the actual front box which is quite hard because the the internal art is smaller and it doesn't fit in the other boxes i'm such a nerd i need to get out more some of the early games got um released in the double dual cases so you know the dual cases that you would get multiple cd albums yeah 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 um like uh well no about the game or metal gear for sure yeah metal uh, gear is yeah. exact so in the uk crash bandicoot got a release in a box like that metal gear got a release in a box like that destruction derby one and two got released in boxes like that um trying to think there were some others as well i think resident evil got those so if you uh, again if yeah you're a, because the two discs yeah if you're a proper and obviously the final fantasies if you're a proper mm-hmm. playstation collector of the ps1 or the original playstation you need to have the full set of the double disc cases in the UK. You also need to have the different case variants of Die Hard. And, uh-huh. and when it got re-released, it came in the slightly larger bespoke PlayStation branded dual case in the UK, which are as fragile as the UK PAL Dreamcast cases. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's it depends how deep you want to get into it, but it's a bit of a deep well if you're going for case variants. And I, for one do my level best to avoid the PlayStation hits re-releases on the PlayStation brand or the Xbox brand. You know, if you've got a game that did gangbuster numbers, so they rebranded it in what I call like a, like it makes it like, yeah, here's a celebration of a game that sold loads, but we'll make it look really cheap and brandish it up with the actual original art put in like yeah. a tiny little box on the front of the box to make and you the, feel like, oh. The, fun, the funny thing is the PS2 Called like greatest hits in a red box. Yeah, and the Xbox told them platinum hits in a what like a silver box. <laughs> <laughs> That's really pretty funny. The uh, and uh, yeah, the PlayStation Three had the red hits boxes uh-huh. as well, didn't they? And the, the over here, the PS Twos were done in a silver um, from memory, and the no and black. Yeah, black um, here too. But I saw you guys have some blue boxes for PS Two also. Yeah, so the majority of the cases are in a blue. Oh. Um, they're a long case, like a DVD case. So not like a Blu-ray case that you'd have for your PlayStation 3, 4, or 5. Um, they're in the smaller ones. The original Xbox came in like a long green DVD case as well. So mm-hmm. did the 360, but they changed it from like a dark translucent green to a, a 
like a lighter trans lighter lighter luminous green yeah the 360 um <clears throat> and obviously the xbox one and and i need to i need to get my greasy mitts on a series x case so i can give it the full rundown and lick and taste it and see what the plastic's made out of mm-hmm. uh, one thing when i unboxed the avengers it came for christmas for the kids to share and uh i said to my daughter oh, you can open this She's like, why do I want to open that? So you go and seal it and then smell it. That's that's weird. Obviously, she's a teenager, so it was all a bit like, I'm not doing that. And I was like, smell it. You need to smell it. That's what the smell, the smell of the PlayStation factory smells like. And I've done that since I had an N64 back in the day because the N64 carts would come with this wrapper on and you would unseal it like a packet of cigarettes, you know, mm-hmm. where it's got that little rip. And like you the cellophane wrapper. Yeah, and then you like rip the top off and you can smell it and open mm-hmm. the book and <laughs> sniff it up and down i thought for ages i was a weirdo for doing that but it seems thanks to the internet i feel less strange because i'm not i've seen evidence of other people doing it as well so i know that that's the dangerous thing about the internet it brings like-minded people together who thought they were single-minded weirdos and shows them there's a whole group of people therefore yeah, is see? this normal no it's groups, dangerous. Bro. groups are good mm, <laughs> are good. no no, all would, groups are. No, I, I would say the internet's poison. Uh, I, I, and, would, I would agree. I would agree. And, it, and it proliferates people sniffing game boxes, which one could argue is a little odd. On that note, Bobby, really, anyone who's paid attention, and Odders is absolutely worn out. He hasn't done any physical exercise for weeks now, thanks to Christmas, and he's at an absolute load. And we've talked for what feels like hours. Maybe it's past in minutes to you. But Odders has been watching the clock as he's been burning calories on the exercise bike. And he's like, finally, we've got to the what you hope into play section. So those who paid attention know that I'm going to turn to you and say, Bobby, what are you hoping? What are you hoping to play this game in week? Just uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales. Fantastic. And then if I finish that, uh, I'll hop on Cyberpunk. Wonderful. I'm going to uh, finish... Uh, the Force Unleashed on the PlayStation 3. Brand new game, fresh out. Uh, everyone's raving about it, brand new. Amazing storytelling, great graphics. Uh, can't get enough of it. And then when I finish that, I might wheel out another new game uh, and finish playing it. 24 on the PlayStation 2. Absolutely great. New series out, Kiefer Sutherland. It's literally based over 24 hours. Uh, it, it, you know, it's 480p. It's cutting edge of high def graphics. It's got all the proper voice actors in it. It's amazing. <laughs> Uh, other than that, do you know what? I might dust stuff. I might finally slap Demon Souls in and give it a run out. I kind of feel like I want to have two concurrent run throughs. I want to do a PlayStation 5 run through and a PlayStation 3 run through so I can write down in my little notebook that I have by my gaming chair for all my little ideas and notes that I have what the differences are. What are the differences between these two games? I'm going to draw up a list with my pencil. I'll clear up a. I keep meaning to get. I've got some PlayStation pads. I'm showing them to you because we're sat next to each other here in New York, but they're uh, it's like a PlayStation 1. Oh, that's awesome. And these, this is what I've... I've got a couple of these. And one so, of that, that's, so that's what you hide in the, uh, the little folder. Yes. This is what I... I have this by my chair when I'm gaming, and I'll make mm-hmm. notes. Sometimes they make it on air. Uh, sometimes they don't. Like, I had a load of notes in here about Alpha Protocol. I wrote down, I don't know why I was doing so much research and why <laughs> so little of it ever made it on air, but it's for my own pleasure. I've also got the, uh, here's a throwback. I think this was, I've just opened it on the, f- the page and it's gone to The Bloody Palace is Now Open, which is a show that Zeta Max made us delist because the sound quality wasn't very good. Um, but it's available on YouTube. And I talked about a game called Lone Sales. It was an indie game. Huh? Uh there's a there's a throwback. I might dust that off because it was a, it was an easy platinum as well from memory, and it's a fantastic game. Um, if I'd had a better memory, it might have been my 2019 game of the year, but I haven't got a very good memory, <laughs> so there it's not. Uh, and that's really Bobby. All said and done, I hope you oh, have. Um, we're going to both turn our separate ways like a Swiss clock, and walk uh-huh. off to our own separate parts of the apartment. I hope you have a good week. If I pass you in the um, annex here that we sit in to record the show overlooking central perk um i wish you the best i hope you well um thank you thank you too i hope you have a good game it's on mars morales knowing you i think you'll be done with that by wednesday yeah well, probably yeah. 
seeing as neither of us have proper jobs. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we just game and record a podcast. <laughs> I don't know what we do with the rest of our time. Uh, eat. Um, eat. The, um, I don't know. So what are you going to sl- slap in after that? Cyberpunk? Yeah, probably. Because uh, Immortals Phoenix Rising is too similar to Valhalla. That needs to go in the uh, bin. And I don't want to... No, 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 no. I know what hmm. you want. I know. Before you, you promise me this. You and make I have a lot Last of, of Us too, also. You make a lot of... Mm, yeah, you got a lot of good games. I wanted you to play Maneater so you could tell me how amazing it is. Bro, you wouldn't believe a game about a shark, man. <laughs> you unlock these areas and you got all the collectibles. Like, oh, I told you it was your kind of game. <laughs> uh, and it's only short, apparently. It's like 20 hours long. Really? Maybe it's 60. But, yeah. you well, know. it's kind of Tuesday, right? Tuesday? What? Once I know you've unlocked a couple of uh, trophies in it, I know you won't be able to not finish it. So I kind of want to get you, pun intended, hooked in <laughs> to man it. <laughs> but I could talk for hours, Bobby, as always, but we need to draw a line under it so our boot show can publish this uh, show and put it out there. Um, to anyone who wants to catch a little bit more of you, they need to go on the Discord or they need to look you up on Instagram, your Chronicles of a Gamer or Bobby's World Podcast. Or find you on our own Discord channel, where you are known as, much to my annoyance, and Albucho is furious because you've voided your contract, but uh, you're known as the Chronicles of a Gamer. And I'm UC George. Uh, And that's that. So thank you, as always, to everybody that's um, been involved with the show or helped in any way. It's been a regular that I forgot to mention, and for that I'm scum, but, you know... I put out some heartfelt messages on the Discord at Christmas and the New Year, and I mean every single last bit of it. You know, crawling out of character for a moment, we kind of put these sort of alter egos on a little bit for the show, and yeah, your your support over the last getting close to two years has been amazing. We've featured in numerous charts all over the world and continue to do so. Um, the comments each week, the the amount of thought that goes into them, um, you know. It means a lot to us, the the community and the way it's grown on the Discord and the way everyone supports each other and, and supports each other's activities and things that they're doing as well, e- either in their personal lives or if they're doing a, a side gig of reviews or their own show or pictures on Instagram or, or whatever it is, or even, even if their own like family lives that they've shared or talked about and everyone's rallied around and has been you know really good eggs. There isn't a bad egg in the unofficial controller batch, to be honest with you. So, uh, you know, I feel very hashtag blessed um, to be able to curate um, this show. And and long may it rain, as long as there's at least one listener, uh, it will continue to be around. And we've got significantly more than that. So (laughs) I don't see the show ending anytime soon. So uh, as always, that's all we have time for this week, listeners. Thank you for your time. We look forward to the pleasure of speaking to you again next week. Until then, happy gaming. Remember, there's nothing wrong with being given the unofficial controller. It's what you do with it that counts. See you, Bobby. See you, George. Hi, it's George here from the Unofficial Controller Podcast. Just taking a moment to, first of all, thank you for listening. It means a hell of a lot to us. Secondly, every week we bring you free content, the latest news, the new releases, a feature of note, normally something to do with games or gaming past, be it one of our history of documentaries or an insight into the industry itself or how games have affected us as people. Well, yes, we incorporate you listeners into that. All we ask is that you drop a little comment on our post on social media and you can get featured on the show. Hey, do you know what? You may even win a prize. The only charge for this is zero pounds, zero pence, zero dollars. That's right. No money. But all we ask is that you like, subscribe and leave a review wherever you found this show. And if you're feeling a little bit cheeky, tell a friend, get them to do the same. We have a Discord that's free for you guys to all join in and get involved in. And the community on Instagram and Twitter is alive and thriving. So don't be a lonely gamer. 
make yourself known. Thank you. And now it's time to begin this week's entertainment. Take care, guys. <laughs>